Archaeologist Randy White is far beneath the hills of France, searching for a special moment in evolution, an era cloaked in mystery, when, with hardly a change in appearance, humans began behaving in ways they had never behaved before. He wants to find out how it was that our ancestors became truly human. It's downright scary to be in these cave environments. They are cold, dark, damp, frightening, dangerous places. When you see people going a kilometer underground or two kilometers underground and you find traces of paintings and that sort of thing, there's something uh, much uh, more profound going on than just an interest in exploration. Perhaps this cave that we're exploring here opens onto our site, which could make, there were any paintings in this cave, could make them the oldest cave paintings on the planet. It's possible Randy White could one day make a discovery as startling as that made in 1994, when others found underground caverns adorned with over 300 images, some painted 34,000 years ago. The oldest rock art known. But finding art is not the only goal. White wants to find something bigger how the human mind was born. Where once people had looked at bare walls and had seen only walls, now others suddenly saw astounding possibilities. And with art came human technology, human communication, human culture. The question is, what happened to make all this possible? How could it be that a species opened its mind and burst into a new realm? How was it that human ancestors evolved a whole new way of seeing themselves? And in time, transformed the planet? Rift Valley of East Africa. Here is where the human story began. For millions of years, Africa was the landscape of human evolution. Across this terrain, an ancestral people survived, reproduced, and passed on their traits from generation to generation. Without Africa, humanity as we know it might never have evolved. This is an area that was once inhabited by hominids before they were truly human. Now it's a site scientists visit to understand how people lived and what they thought about over a million years ago. Soon after the rains each year, Rick Potts leads a team that scours these badlands, finding stone tools and fossils. Potts believes this place was once a tool-making factory. It takes really sharp eyes to find that first fragment of fossil or to find that sliver of stone tool that says hominids were right here at this spot. And so I knew that we were very close to an ancient soil that was nearly one million years old that had previously produced lots of fossil bones and, and stone tools. 
it turned out to be a hand axe, one of those stone tools that our ancestors made for a long, long time, hundreds of thousands of years. Okay. These hominids were bringing these rocks down from the highlands and they were chipping the edges of the tool around and they could even hold it in their hand like this, use it for, for digging or for knocking off flakes that they could use for, for butchering animals. In a sense, this is the Swiss army knife of the Paleolithic. Here, these Paleolithic or ancient stone tool people made a variety of simple implements repeatedly for nearly a million years. Indeed, their minds were, uh, were oriented towards survival. They had the ability to make these tools, which had some sophistication to them. But the fact that they kept making them means that they had a kind of a, a mental template, a, a, a regularity of thinking uh, that kept producing these same things over and over again. Chances are they didn't speak to one another like we do. And, uh, and apparently they, uh, they got along just fine with this single tool so a million and a half years this, this was around, which is an immense period of time, an absurd period of time. When you think of today, where, where computer programs don't last for longer than a couple of years before they're improved, before they diversify in some way, uh, and our technology is the same way. It's not the way of the, the technology of these ancient people a million years ago. They didn't have something that we have the creativity, the, the innovation, uh, the diversity of cultures that, of course, characterizes our own species. On the tree of life, human evolution began around six million years ago, when hominids split off from the common ancestor they shared with chimpanzees. They descended from the trees about four million years ago and entered a new world. Two and a half million years ago, with a modified hand, they fashioned stone tools and began to depend more and more on a diet of meat. The size of their brains increased dramatically. And about two million years ago, some began leaving Africa. These early travelers were successful for a while, but in the end, they all became extinct. It wasn't until about 60,000 years ago that the first truly modern humans, our ancestors, began leaving Africa. They were hunter-gatherers, foraging for food, living in small groups, roaming a wide landscape. But they were different from their predecessors. They had begun a revolutionary way of life. This lifestyle had emerged over millions of years through the multiple processes of evolution. Mutation, selection, adaptation, competition, failure, punctuated by the occasional success. It was a story of evolution, of change over time, no different from the stories of so many other species, but in the end, it produced results new to the planet. Behavior changed very radically at around 50,000 years ago. Well, this is someone who lived in Israel, let's say roughly 100,000 years ago, this skull. Now you might say, Israel, is that Africa? At the time, in a sense, it